Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. We had a, we've, had, we've got a heap of videos out there, hundreds of them, all right? So make sure you watch them and have a look at the comments. People love them. So I would suggest that if you're not watching all the videos and watch until the end, you're missing out. And uh, don't believe me, just look at the comments and believe everybody else. So what we're doing in this one is we've got the intercooler off, we've got the throttle body off. Okay, it's a Hilux, so we've got the wiring loom for the injectors completely out of the way over here. You probably can't see that in the picture, but it doesn't matter because the area we're working on is here. We are doing injectors and an EGR clean. And I just thought I'd run a bit of a video again while I was taking the rest of this EGR valve off. Um, I pointed out in a Hilux, because we've got that full detail EGR clean video. I think it goes for about an hour and a half, and two hours nearly, so there's lots of jam-packed with info. It's not like your normal YouTube video where they just do all this talk and then the camera's on them. You know, it doesn't matter if you're looking at me. We're looking at the car, right? This is what matters, what's going on here. I haven't got time to be walking around with selfie sticks and editing and whatever, right? So this is just real information as it is, bada bing. So I'm going to get some tools and keep pulling this apart and talk to you as we go. So a large flat blade screwdriver, we want to remove this top, these two top vacuum lines off the EGR valve there. So that just helps obviously hooking behind and press it while we give it a bit of a pull. Same thing down here on the side. There's a yellow one at the top, so we're gonna sort of pull on that. Or even the pink one, whichever one seems to be like it wants to go first. Everything on this vehicle, this vehicle, can't even speak properly, everything on this vehicle has been really tight kind of thing. It's 10 years old, and it might not have been apart for 10 years, or these parts in particular. So we're gonna use our little heater hose stretchy tool and crack that loose, we did on the yellow. Look, these are really handy. I don't, I'm gonna give Blue Point Snap on a bit of a plug, right? Snap on. I'm gonna try and read you the number. Snap on. It's, it's worn off. If I've got it right, it's an A173A. Yeah, USA. Anyway, awesome tool. I've got to be honest, I did used to break the tips off those. A few of them broke off. They replaced them. It's a lifetime warranty, so they replace it. Um, this one's been going for over 20 years now. Really handy not only on heater hoses, radiator hoses, vacuum hoses, any hose you like to loosen it up a little bit. It does two things, allows you get in there slowly and it kind of stretches it and you can work on it. But you do need to be careful which way you push and pull on it because you can. I'm still going to use that flat blade to push down while I pull on the hose. You just need to take your time because these hoses, they can't. I've seen a lot of them split and cut short and all sorts of things. So just take your time. You don't want to do that and have that happen to you. So the yellow and the pink, we're just going to. Tuck those down there out the way for now. We've got the two top hoses off, so we want to take the three 12 mils off the side. So we're going to go grab our 12 mil deep reach socket. Works best, just gives you a little bit more room out so you're not slicing yourself open on this. So I don't know, you might notice if you I put a video up. Look, you know, this is the thing with videos. We make videos. I've got a lot of videos there that aren't up yet, you know what I mean? So you don't really necessarily... It doesn't mean if I put this up today or did it today. Could have been today, could have been yesterday, could have been last week, could have been a month ago. Okay, so when I say I put a video up recently and you can't find it, sorry about that. So stay tuned, because it might be coming, you know? So I don't want to give you too much at once, because if we give you too much, a lot of people, they're already busy and... They're not going to watch it, so they're going to miss out, you know, they're going to skip stuff. We don't want that. But then we don't want to starve you either, you know? We don't want to go a week or two weeks or three weeks with no video because you'd be going, oh, I'm used to getting these videos, right? So we're trying to, we're trying to consider it. This unit goes on the side. There's your bottom bolt, right? I'll just sit the bolts back in there to show you. They're 12 mil, they're M8s, right? Okay, so we're just going to go sit that on the bench. to be considerate of when to put videos up so what I'd love to see for those still watching in the comment of this video whenever it ends up going up the main comment I'd like to see is what time of the day in Australia you got to give me Melbourne time because I'm in Melbourne and I'm not going to spend the time doing the calculations right I know there's people overseas in the, in the US I know we've got people in Norway I know we've got New Zealand I know we've got people all over the world watching but I suppose one of our main audience is Australia and we're working on Australian vehicles in Australia. So, guys, you know, Australia's going to get priority. But look, 
in your comments in Melbourne time, what's the most ideal time you would like to see videos go up? Um, you know, is it 7 p.m. at night, any particular day of the week? And we'll try and do that. We're, what we're working on at the moment is kind of one a day. One a day, and I'm thinking, you know, after dinner sort of time, or if I've got a short video or something that's important, I might just click one and let one out during the day, you know, lunchtime or maybe, you know, four or five o'clock in the afternoon and then something else later on. So it's going to be one or two a day if we can, maybe one smaller one, one bigger one. So now that we've got this off the side, I'm just going to zip tie this heater pipe, which we unbolted previously. Just got to find a zip tie. Zip. And uh, what we'll do, if you like the way I've used the uh, high res gloves, just so you can see what I'm doing. Because you know, when it's black, it just doesn't stand out. You like that idea? No, no, just joking, it's just coincidence. Our supplier, you know, that's all he had in stock at the time, so I went, yeah, we can do that. We'll use that as a bit of entertainment somewhere along the lines. So we're just zip tying that. The actual line we're zip tying it to is the vacuum line. So for those, for those that are unaware, on all these 1KDs and a lot of other vehicles, but you know, this is a 1KD, it's what we work on, we're mainly going to talk about. See this big thick line here, so the thin ones are your brake lines and stuff generally. This is going to general info for a minute. But specifically on this vehicle, brake lines, vacuum line, there's a vacuum pump down on the engine around here, so basically that line comes through and connects to that in a roundabout sort of way and goes to the brake booster. So it's the vacuum line that we're connecting to. And yeah, it's still around there somewhere, and it's still going to be a little bit in the way, so it's not an idea. You could get a whole heap of zip ties, but the main thing is we've just got it off the top so that once we unbolt the EJR valve, it comes out of the way. Sort of out of the way of lifting it up. Now we've got a I'm going to give this King Chrome spanner a little plug because it works really well. It's a 10 mil, right? 10 mil ratchet spanner. It's got a little angle on it. Right, see the little kick up angle at this end. Part number CRVKO3003. Works really well, I think, for removing these two upside down bolts in the bottom of the EJR valve because it's got a ratchet and it's got the angle on it. As I said over the years, you get good at working out, well, how could we do this easier? And this is all the sort of stuff that's in the full detail injector replacement videos. Don't think they're bits and pieces and whatever, you know, there's a number, at least around half a dozen full injector replacement jobs. And so if there's something cut out of one or something here or there, the start or the end or something by accident, it's covered. Between the videos, it's covered. So you watch them all. I'm just going to put that bolt up there, as I usually say. What comes off first goes furthest away and we work our way out. So back around the other side now to get that upside down bolt from this side. Easier to access from around here. Now what you've got to be careful of here is... That one's tight. All right. that, that's what your angle's about. See the angle? So it just clears that. Prado hasn't got that, so you're just kind of clearing that. And if you're lucky, you only need to get a few. I'm doing it one-handed. Normally I'd have my other finger in there as well, holding it up, so. But then I'd probably get in the way of things too much. So I'm trying to do, if it looks a bit awkward, it's probably because I'm doing it a different way. So, oh yeah, and that's good. And then you can get it by hand. That's what you want. You just want to have to get that a few turns. Oh, get it a few turns. sometimes it gets tighter again and you've got to put the spanner back on it and the tips for putting it back together are in the full detail EJR clean video because at the moment we're not putting it back together we're taking it apart because there is some information there that is just going to make your job a whole lot easier and that's why we give you the information we don't give it's not fake information some some places and people they make up information and change it around to suit them to make it hard for you. They actually, you know, there's people out there that they get you in on the job and get you to do all the hard parts to make it look hard, you know? It's just disgusting behavior, the way some people behave, you know? Um, you know, get the customer in to help and give them all the hard jobs to somehow, you know, prove how hard it is or something.
just got to be careful who you deal with. Um, what are we doing now? Mm, we're going to take that box. Actually, that'll be. We're going to grab a 12 mil ratchet spanner out of our. What have we got there? That's a Stanley set, actually. Okay. So. Yeah, they're okay. They do the job. You know what I mean? Uh, I've, done, I've talked about tools already. We're not going to talk too much about tools. Um, um, right. You know, they do the job, whatever. You know, I suppose you, if you're going to use them a lot, you pay once, you get the quality, you get something with a lifetime warranty, you know you've paid once. It's probably a good quality tool if it's got that warranty. I love tools with a lifetime warranty. Personally, I think it's great. And they should have a lifetime warranty because some of the prices of that is, is all that it, it needs to be a lifetime warranty. So back with the 3.8 ratchet with that extension, this is where the wobbly wobble extensions come in because when you get down on this bolt here, sometimes you just need a little bit more angle. Be careful of this here. So you're going to hold the top there so that you don't accidentally oh, bang, you don't crack that. So the hand went there with the finger in between holding it away from the plastic. Right. Now to do things a bit quicker, and you wouldn't have cracked it loose with this, but it gets it out real quick. If you like that, so yeah, a lot of people are going, "Yeah, we've been using those for years. We have. Too. We had the Ryobi Plus One system when they were blue. Okay, you know it's green now. I'll give you an example. We even had the torch. There you go. When they were blue, I bet you didn't even know they were blue. Yep. At first, no, 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 no. <laughs> anyway, um, let's go and undo those bolts over the other side there. Stop it. Okay, those bolts up there, like we said, start stacking them from the center out, then you'll know where they go. Just cracking these two loose. Just be careful you don't do damage to yourself hitting that or something like that. We've cracked them loose. You can see they're quite tight. All right. I've got to let you know this battery, this battery here, this battery is getting low. So when it cuts out, that's it for this video. So I'll say it now. If you got something out of it, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Turn the bell on so you don't miss the next bit of info. And in the comments, let me know what was what were you getting meant to tell me? What time of the day you would like to see the videos appear? Or it doesn't make any difference because you'll get to it when you get to it. That's cool too. All right, I'm going to zip these out. We're going to continue on until the battery goes flat. And hopefully, as soon as we made such an awesome head start, hopefully we get this EGR valve lift it off and we can show you what's going on in there before the battery goes flat okay, those two bolts there that EGR valve should be ready to lift off okay if you're not sure what I've done check that other video full detail EGR clip and there it is and there's your what it's been eating for breakfast. So you looked at the EGR valve and you went, oh yeah, it's not too bad. And then you look there, it's not looking too good. And let me have a look down into the manifold and see how disgusting it is. Let's have a look, shall we? This is the, uh... well, actually, it looks, this is one of these ones, I hope the, hope the video is still going, I'll just get that gasket out of the way before we lose it. Um, this is one of those ones where it'd be, it's a 50-50, phone a friend, you know, phone a friend or something, because I can tell you what's going on here, I've seen a few of these, if you look at that right there, that looks absolutely chock-a-block, terrible, disgusting, and you want to pull the manifold off, right? And I get that, and there's a bit of zip tie here, and that wasn't me, so let's get that out. Where did that come, who did that? 
I'll just get that out and I'll show you what I mean. So this is what we do. Someone else would probably just ignore that. But look at this bit of zip tie. What was that off? Get it out. Come on. Come in. Come in. Come on. It's like talking to a little pet kitten. You've got to talk to your zip ties so they come out from where it got left. What have I got here? Come on. Here it is. Look, there's a bit of zip tie, eh? Huh? You like that? Get rid of that. Okay, so a bit of leaf as well. Okay, so this one, so this is important information that if you hung around, you get to here. Now, when I look down to number four port, it's quite rectangle and clear, which is really good. But all around this hole is terrible. We've got at least 10 mil thick, particularly on the back of the hole. So the only way to know how far that continues is to start cleaning this out the way. So what we do is, we remove this gasket out the way. This is the one I'll talk about that you do need, okay? Now this one you might get away with reusing, but why would you? This is always the ones that are more likely that the flaking happens, okay? Um, that one you'd probably get away with, right? You can see there's a bit of flaking at the edge there, and there's quite a few spots, but nowhere that's really imperative. Okay, that is reusable, but you're not going to do it because look how far in it is. And if it leaks for the sake of what, eight bucks or whatever it is. So not happening. So what are we going to do? This video is coming to an end very shortly. We're going to clean that out and vac it out. And we're going to get our fingers up there and kind of go and have a feel and work out how bad it is further on from where we can see. You can use a camera if you like, but you can't really see. I'd rather go by feel, if you know what I mean. I can see down number four port, I'm happy with that. So I'm not worried about the head, the ports, or anywhere from about, around about where the manifold finishes, looking at it from here. But there's stuff in the way that I can't see it that well either. So we've got to be really careful to scrape it and vac it out. We don't want it going in, we want it coming out. There you go, hear that? That's the other phone ringing. So that's kind of saying it's time to go and answer the other phone. And thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't already, subscribe, thumbs up. Talk to you soon. Catch up.